What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. And today guys, I am here to review Death Wish, the latest Kino Lorber 4K. I have been really excited uh, to get this one in and talk about it because I have never seen the movie. Well, I have now, but I had never seen the movie uh, Death Wish. I know in the comment section below, let me have it. Can I can't believe you haven't seen Death Wish. Well, I haven't. I also haven't seen the sequels, which I'm excited to get to um, at some point as well. But look, before we get into it, guys, we're going to talk about the visuals. We're going to talk about the audio. We're going to talk about the special features and the packaging and the movie itself. And just overall, guys, is this worth a pickup? We're going to talk about that as well. But before we get into it, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We talk about physical media, uh, 4Ks, Blu-rays, owning the movies that you love, all that stuff there behind me every single day on this channel. So if you like that kind of stuff, you will enjoy this channel. So hit the subscribe button. Also, be sure to like this video and then comment down below, guys, what's your thoughts on Death Wish as a movie? Are you going to purchase this 4K from Kino Lorber? So first up, before we get into anything else, let's talk about the actual visual quality of this 4K release. This is a native 4K scan with Dolby Vision and HDR, and I thought that, guys, overall, I thought this looked phenomenal. Like, Kino Lorber usually has a pretty good track record when it comes to their 4Ks. Most of the 4Ks that I've got from Kino Lorber usually look fantastic. The biggest criticism that you could throw at Kino Lorber is that sometimes in the beginning when they started doing 4K, I feel like they've gotten better at it now. They didn't always include Dolby Vision or HDR. Now they're starting to put that in to most of their 4Ks. But I thought that this looked great. Now, I have no reference for any other different formats. I hadn't seen this movie on, on DVD or Blu-ray. But I have to imagine that if you own the Blu-ray release of Death Wish in whatever version you own it in, you can get this and you can toss that Blu-ray. Because I'm telling you right now, this looked absolutely fantastic it's a dark gritty movie anyway set in new york city so you have that like aesthetic i love that 70s like filmmaking aesthetic so you can expect a certain level of grain in this as well it's not real heavy on the grain i would say it's a medium amount of grain just enough there to remind you that you are watching an actual film itself i was actually kind of surprised and how little grain that there was. There is a high level of clarity throughout this entire movie as you're watching this in 4K. Now, just talking about a couple of scenes that really stood out to me, I was particularly impressed with two different uh, moments in this movie. First off, the opening of the film, where it has Charles Bronson and his wife um, on the beach in Hawaii. That looked fantastic. Like, that looked just as good. And there's just something about the Hawaiian beaches, I guess. But I, I, I will reference Blue Hawaii, the Elvis movie that Paramount Presents put out last year. That looked just as good, that sequence, as Blue Hawaii. And that was a top-tier 4K release. So... That was a great uh, little scene in the movie. I don't know, there's just something about it. All the colors were popping, like his wife's bathing suit was like pink. And the colors with the blue ocean in the background, the sands, it just looks so great um, in 4K. That HDR was really popping off. But then you get to that more like dull, like city aesthetic. Everything still looks great, but the thing that I could notice in the city was all the outfits that they were wearing throughout the movie, just the kind of gray and tans and the blacks. You could see every fiber on the outfit. So everything still looked great once they got to the city itself. It's just that there weren't a lot of colors to really stand out and pop. Now, there were when you got into like the apartment building. Charles Bronson paints his apartment like yellow, and that really popped, like the actual apartment setting of the film itself. That popped as well. But the other scene I was going to talk about that really stood out was the end. The last 20 minutes where Charles Bronson is kind of chasing around a few uh, criminals around the city streets, not trying to spoil anything. And it's night outside and you have that contrast of him with the dark city New York streets in the background. Like the contrast level was so perfect in the dark. You could see the black jacket that Charles Bronson was wearing just like crystal clear against the nighttime city streets in the park backdrop. And you could see like every detail of his jacket. I was just very impressed because some 4Ks I've seen when it gets dark, like you can barely make stuff out. But you could still see like the fine details of the background of Charles Bronson and the outfit that he was wearing even in the dark. So I thought all of that stuff looked great. The black levels were excellent. And the contrast was fantastic. So overall, I cannot say enough good things about this transfer. I don't think that Kino Lorber could have done a better job. I thought this was damn near perfection as far as a transfer. But like I said, it just it's a more like gloomy 
type movie in that New York setting. So you don't get a lot of opportunities for that 4K and the HDR to really pop. But I think that this is this has got to be the best this movie's ever looked. There has never been another version of Death Wish that has looked this good. I can promise you that. So let's go ahead and jump into the audio. So there are two tracks, uh, two audio tracks on here. There is a DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 Mono, and there is a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1. Now I did switch back and forth as I was watching it between the Mono and the 5.1, and I got to a point where I just preferred the Mono, the sound of the Mono itself. It sounded much clearer as far as the voices and the dialogue and the people talking with each other. I could just make out the conversations a lot better in the Mono. For some reason, the 5.1, it sounded, again, I could still hear it, but it sounded a little muffled, a little echoey. I don't know exactly why, but it just didn't sound as good as the mono. So I stuck with the mono, and I would suggest if you're gonna watch this, that's probably the preferred uh, way to watch this. And jumping into the packaging, I absolutely, again, I know it's kind of like the classic poster image, but I just love this image right here with the reds and everything. Just, the, just that look of Charles Bronson, just looking like such a badass on that cover. I just love it. Um, and then on the back right here, I, again, and there's nothing flashy about the Kino Lorber slip covers but I'll show you the back uh, right there with the casting list and the specs and everything I do love the slip covers and how they put the font um, on the side let me flip that over I don't know if you guys can see that as well uh, I love how they put the font on the side just like the the font of the actual like title itself it's not the generic white uh, font that Kino is known for until you take the slip cover off and then it's that classic kind of generic Kino font that some people will criticize Kino for but I kind of like it because it's uniform uh, with all the other ones but one cool thing about this one guys you don't always get this with Kino Lorber this actually has reversible uh, cover art. And again, I wish they would make this a standard and do this with all their releases. You, sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't, but that's the reversible cover art right there. And I just think that's freaking awesome right there. Looks great. And I'll show you the back again uh, right there. Now this is a two disc uh, set. So you do get a Blu-ray and you get a 4K. And a lot of people complain about the generic Kino Lorber disc art. I've come to expect it at this point. I would love it if they started doing disc art. Um, but that would also feel kind of weird when it comes to Kino because Kino's just always done this. So I just expect it out of them. Uh, but it would be cool if they started doing some disc art. Still use like the same overlay. Uh, but just put some images from the movie and stuff underneath. I think that would be cool. But you do get the Blu-ray, you do get the 4K. Now the Blu-ray is a 4K scan, so that's also an upgrade from your previous Blu-ray. You get an upgraded Blu-ray and you get that 4K uh, disc as well. Now getting into the special features, and this is where I might get a little negative here. Now you do get a brand new audio commentary by film historian Pal Tabit, but that's it as far as new stuff. You don't get anything else new with this release. Now I kind of come to expect that with Kino Lorber. They don't do a ton of like new interviews and special features but they at least have uh you know quite a few like archival features and stuff and the only one that they have here is the interview with actor john hertzfeld and that's it so i don't know if death wish has just never had a bunch of special features i have to imagine that they've had quite a few with like dvd releases and blu-ray releases and stuff I, I can't believe that that's it as far as death wish it's such an iconic movie like they've had to have had a little bit more in terms of special features uh, when it comes to their releases. But yeah, just one interview with the actor, one brand new special audio commentary. So I think that they definitely, they have the theatrical trailers some image galleries and stuff like that, but just the standard stuff that we've come to expect at this point from most releases. So I would like to see Kino Lorber maybe jump into and, and add some more special features uh, to their releases going forward. Again, this is good, it's fine, but I think they could have added a couple new interviews or something just to make this release really stand out. But that's all the specs and features of this release. Let's take a second to talk about the actual movie itself because this was a first time watch for me. I had never seen Death Wish before, this classic, iconic movie starring Charles Bronson, who I'm pretty sure is in all the Death Wish sequels. I need to check those out for sure. I definitely want to check those out. I'm becoming a big fan of Charles Bronson the more that I've seen of him. Uh, Once Upon a Time in the West is definitely my favorite performance of his, but I really, really loved him in this movie as well. This is directed by Michael uh, Winner, who also directed Death Wish 2 and Death Wish 3. I don't think he did any of the ones after that. And he also did a movie called The Mechanic, which also got a remake recently with Jason Statham, which I have not seen that one um, as well. So basically you have Charles Bronson as the character of Paul Kersey and his wife gets murdered and his daughter is left comatose and he seeks revenge on the scum of New York City because of this. He kind of turns himself into a vigilante just based on this trauma that he's had. And it's the classic story of revenge. You got Charles Bronson going around the city, taking the law into his own hands, seeking out these criminals as this vigilante. One thing that I thought was cool 
is he didn't, it didn't feel like he was really provoking everybody. He would just go out there in the middle of the streets, stand there and then be attacked by people. And then he would just shoot them and then run off. And it's kind, it was kind of felt like, you know, he's a vigilante. He's like Batman in a sense, but he did it without the mask. So it's just kind of even more badass. And Charles Bronson, just the way that he plays it is so badass anyway. So he just stand in there and all of a sudden people are attacking him. He just pulls his gun out and just shoots him. You know, the movie itself has this, you know, 70s gritty style to it, which I just love. I'm just really loving the vibe and the style of 70s filmmaking lately. Like the more that I'm seeing of it, I'm just really loving. And this has all the hallmarks of that era. Like it just feels very much of that gritty like 70s era of filmmaking and I loved it for that for sure. I also really like how they establish his character in the beginning of the film. So he's very liberal. He's very non-gun. He's very for the rights of the people and wanting to clean up the streets. You know, he sees the good in people more often than not. When he sees a criminal, he sees somebody that needs help. So he's very much on that side of the political spectrum. And then you have the event that happens to him and his daughter and his wife, and it just changes him. And I think that that makes sense for him and his character. And I like the way that it's done. I think it's very well executed. Like you have that emotional connection between him and his wife established almost immediately in the movie, like with them on the beach in Hawaii. And like, you just understand that they're, they're a good family unit. They're husband and wife, they love each other, and you can just tell that they have this strong bond and relationship with each other, which makes it all the more heartbreaking when you're in the hospital. And it's such a cold way that the doctor delivers the news to Charles Bronson uh, when his wife dies. He's just like, uh, he's like, well, how's my wife? And he goes, oh, she died like five minutes ago. Just so matter of fact, it's so cold and you can just see the pain in his face. And it's just such good acting by Charles Bronson. I think he does a great job in this movie, but um, it's mildly political in the way that it tackles like gun control. And it just kind of shines a light on how the problems that we have and the political issues that we have nowadays really have been there since the 70s or the 60s. They've been there for a long time. Like the stuff we're still arguing about is not new. So you go back to the 70s of this movie and they're talking about the same kind of stuff. Like he travels to Arizona and they talk about how there's no crime there because they all have, they're all able to carry guns around and they're not able to carry guns in New York. So that's kind of really eye opening when you see stuff like that in movies and you realize that we, this the stuff that we're arguing about now it's not new. Like we've been arguing about this stuff for so long. So I thought all that stuff uh, was very well done. And lastly, I like how he never, because in the beginning, and I didn't even mention this, but Jeff Goldblum is in this movie and I had no idea Jeff Goldblum was in this movie. He's one of the thugs that attacks his family in the beginning. But I like how he never, like he goes on the streets and he becomes a vigilante and he's trying to seek justice and revenge, but he never finds the actual criminals that assaulted his wife and daughter from the beginning again. It's not one of those situations where he's looking the whole movie for these criminals. He's really just trying to take care of, of crime as a whole in the city and not really seeking out these individuals. And I thought that that was very realistic because realistically, he's not gonna find the same criminals that assaulted his wife and daughter at the beginning of the movie. That's probably not gonna happen because they probably left town or they went to the other side of town or what, whatever. He's not going to find those same criminals. So I thought that that was very well done and very realistic uh, the way that they did that. So um, yeah, overall, really enjoyed this movie. Great movie. I'm excited to watch Death Wish 2. I know Vinegar Syndrome has a Death Wish 2 4K that I definitely need to check out. But as a score for this film, I will give it a 4 out of a 5. Really enjoyed this film a lot. Really enjoyed this release from Kino Lorber. They knocked this out of the park visually. Uh, it looked fantastic. I cannot recommend this release from Kino Lorber enough. Right now, you can get it on Amazon for $27.99, but you can also get it on the Kino Lorber website for $26.59. A little bit cheaper on the Kino website versus the Amazon site, but I will link both in the uh, description below. But thank y'all so much for watching my review of Death Wish on 4K from Kino. Highly recommend this release. Please, if you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already like this video also comment your thoughts on this movie and this release in the comment section below turn on those bell notifications for all future videos and follow me on all my social media accounts those links are down below in the description and we'll see you next time